Hello everybody out there. My name is Jason Norton. I'm the pastor here at Kings Trail Cowboy Church and I'm actually excited to do this little intro to the sermon um, because it's always a, a good thing to get your mind right and to get settled before you hear God's Word. And speaking of God's Word, I have a scripture for you. It's in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. It says, Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So when Jesus said, "If you come to me and find rest, he also said for you and I to learn from him. So in this sermon section, I pray that you learn the words of Jesus. I pray that you learn the word of God. And um, as you're listening, just remember that this is God's word, and his promise to you is, Faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So enjoy the message. Um, I pray it blesses you, and not just you, but everything in your life. And uh, we'll see you at the end. Love you. Bye-bye. Morning. Father, I thank you for everybody that showed up today. I thank you, Lord, for everybody that's watching. May they be encouraged. May you reestablish hope. <laughs> and may not one be fearful. Jesus, that's impossible without you. We need you. Lord, I'm thankful for times like this. Because it causes me to pause and evaluate my own life. Jesus, you're very serious about souls, yep. about people. Yep. And I thank you, Lord, that you'll cause your man or woman to be the same. Lord, may every word that comes out of my mouth be very honoring to you and encouraging to the brethren. Lord, I pay for uh, all the shepherds in the area. All the shepherds in Texas, all the shepherds in the United States. Give them great wisdom and great courage on what to do and how to do it, when to do it, how often to do it, when not to do it. Lord, if your presence isn't here, then we're just playing games. May you speak to your people. May your name be honored. May everybody be healed. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Fenced in. The Lord showed me this last Sunday, but he wouldn't tell me what it's about until Tia texted me and asked me, what's the flyer need to be? And that's when I heard fenced in, but all I saw before that was this. And Andy and Corey built this, so praise the Lord for them that know what they're doing, because if I had to build it, we couldn't have this message for at least another year. <laughs> I am not a wood welder. Yeah, I was the, hey, go get this guy. Um... But it's, uh, the stage represents the church. Y'all represent the world watching the church. 
fenced in by fear. And that's not just corporately, it could be that way. It's, you know, us individually, if you're born again, you're the church. How often do you feel like you're fenced in? You can see what to do and know what to do, but there's just something stopping you. And it's not really a big deal, but it's a big deal. It's kind of, it's very strange at times walking through this sanctification process. And um, I'm thankful that, you know, I can, I can have an, an idea. On what to preach, what to say. And God will interrupt you. And I'm so thankful he does. He'll interrupt you and say, how about you say this first? So when I hear people say, God, Holy Spirit, don't speak to you, that's craziness to me. I mean, Scripture says, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. And, um, you know, he, he's opened my eyes, and I'm sure he's opened your eyes a lot this week. I'm not crying because I'm scared of crying because of, why doesn't this world see that Jesus is the answer? That's, that's what hurts. It's not, it's not just a, a story on Sunday. It's not just a, a midweek service on Wednesday. It's not just a devotional. He's a strong king. I dare you. I dare you to ask him to convince you. I dare you to ask him to persuade you how powerful he is. He is so strong. So when he interrupts my thoughts and what my ideas and my plans, I'm thankful because now I know it's about to get really good. And he, he reminded me of the first three chapters of Revelation where Jesus is going to the seven churches of Revelation. He says he went to the angel of the church. Angel means messenger. So he's going to the one who brings the message at the church, the one responsible. And he says, say this to them. Say this to them. So he's going, and he does the same thing every time. He goes to one church, and he says, this is me. I want to remind you who I am, what I'm capable of. And hey, by the way, I'm going to compliment you here. I'm going to correct you here. I'm going to show you how to fix the correction. I'm going to promise you something. If you fix it, I'll give you this. If you don't fix it, here's what's going to happen. And in the midst of that thought, I'm thinking about it because I've read Revelation so many times. I, I remember the Holy Spirit saying, I never said this. Listen, listen, this is good. And I'll explain it, so if you don't understand, I'll explain it. He said, I never said to the angel of the church of Ephesus, go tell the angel of the church of Smyrna. He never said, shepherd, go tell that other shepherd to do this or that. Translation, this church is not anything about correcting any other church. Because God, Holy Spirit, is fully capable of speaking to other churches. We do have a right in this church to correct, encourage, rebuke, etc., all the things within this body of Christ. But he says, you stop where you're at and don't you start saying anything about any other church. Because how... Ah, we got to be careful. Because I don't, I don't ever want people to think because we, we left the doors open this Sunday... That this is a chest-bumping, alpha male, high-five moment to sit here and say, yeah, what well, y'all didn't, but we did. This is not eighth grade. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This is one complete body of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> there are senior shepherds this morning regretting what they did. Regretting that they didn't stand up and say, we're leaving it open. I don't care what happens. You imagine what they're deciding. That's why I don't take it lightly. I'm thankful that me, Pastor Dwayne, and the other three elders of this church are in complete and total unity on not only just opening it today, but since everything seemed to shut down, we decided to open this thing 24-7. So if you wake up in the middle of the night... You wake up in the middle of the night at 3 o'clock in the morning, 
You drag your butt up here and there'll be praise and worship music going on and you can pray. You can get fear off of you. There'll always be a minister here. You might have to wake them up off the couch in the, in the office. But they were, they were faced with tough decisions. Do you know that the shepherds, you know, I, I don't just contemplate on opening the doors on Sunday. Do you know if you're a preacher today, if you're a pastor today, you're going to have to contemplate going to jail. You're going to have to contemplate one day getting your head blown off for the witness of, because guess who they come for first? They come for the shepherd. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. It's a basic biblical principle that the devil knows very well. So it's not just on Sunday. And I'm not trying to strike fear. I'm trying to say this is what the book says. And I sincerely believe that this is just warm up. This isn't even, I'm reminded of the scripture. It says, for you ran with the soldiers and it wearied you. How will you do with the horses? If you're running with the foot soldiers and they wearied you, how are you going to do with horses? So I don't, I don't blame my, my fellow shepherds, my, my, our, our fellow shepherds, our, our fellow churches. Because I know this, in the midst of my questioning with the Lord, he said, I judge the intentions of their heart. And many of them are shutting the doors because they're, they're, wanting, they're looking out for the safety of people. Tough, tough decisions. Hey, I don't know this. Is there anybody here today in their 90s? Ma'am, do you ever remember anything happening in the world where they shut the church down? She's in her 90s and she's never heard of such a thing. This is not some cupcake type decision. Amen? Amen. But at the same time, we don't want to be fenced in by fear. We want to make sound decisions. We want to make wise decisions. But at the same time, we want to never base our decision off fear of something that can take place. If we do that, if we do that, then we're in trouble. Now, listen. I started seeing things a little different. You remember in the Bible it talks about pestilences, famine, sword. Never in my life have I, have I seen the scriptures this way. Pestilence, we, we've seen that. We're seeing that, yeah. right? But then it causes everybody to stay home. It causes things to be shut down. It causes systems to shut down. Now you've got a famine. Yeah. Yeah. You, have a prolonged, you have a prolonged pestilence, you have a prolonged, they'll have a famine. You have a prolonged famine, then you have swords. Yeah. I never saw it that way until this week. And then I, I believe that we should ask the Lord for wisdom moment to moment in, in times like this. Moment to moment. Moment to moment in times like this. And, and I, I saw the same thing. And, I'm, and never, I'm not trying to be funny. But when I saw empty shelves in the grocery stores, you know what I thought of? I thought that was a sign to the church to start praying and fasting because the food's gone. <clears throat> we all love our food. But I can assure you, three days without food, you are not starving. You ain't even started hunger pains yet. Trust me. But the next time we see something like that, may it possibly trigger us to pray and fast. Amen? Um, where's Miss Judy? She's teaching. Okay. She posted something. Made me think of something totally different. If we have an ice storm type stuff and people were fearful. There was, I forgot when, what year it was. Maybe y'all, some of y'all got dates in your head that's like concrete. Of when literally people couldn't go to work. It's too much ice. And we literally started getting a bunch of our trucks and we started taking people to their jobs. We started... I literally got out one day with my excursion. At the time, we had an excursion and um, started pulling people out of ditches and then asking them 
about Jesus and witnessing to him and, and all this stuff. But Judy, she, she has a, an experience I've never heard of. She said she was going to the store to shop, and she sees this elderly woman in the middle of, y'all imagine this, in the middle of an aisle, four tear crying, overwhelmed with every, all the hysteria, people going all around her, nobody helping her. And Judy goes, hey, can I help you? And they get to talking and all this stuff. They, they communicate with each other. She helps her out. But I was sitting there going, how beautiful would it be? Y'all know that Jesus, you want to know when he gets serious with the church? Widows, orphans. He gets very serious. I saw us having a whole other ministry. Disaster relief. We'll have thousand too many trailers head south when a hurricane hits. I believe the next, because it's going to happen again. Y'all know that, right? This is birthing pains. Well, what's about to be born? A new age. Book of Revelation, end times, Matthew chapter 27, 26, 27, 28. You imagine 10 of us men going to the stores and we don't want no food at all. And now we just go to the aisles and we're looking for the elderly lady that's overwhelmed. And now we guard her and ask her, what is she? Matter of fact, give me your list. I send three guys that way and two guys that way. We're going to get your list. Matter of fact, you stay right here and Brother Colby's just going to hold your hand and see what you need. How beautiful of a ministry would that be? You think that would witness as a church? Men who would guard women who cannot help themselves. Amen. I started seeing stuff differently. So the Lord told me real quick, <laughs> it is not your position to correct other churches. He does that. But I, I want to explain why we decided to keep the doors open. And not only on Sunday, but 24-7 until further notice. It just made sense. Number one reason. When the church reacts just like the world, what witness is that? If King's Trail acted like everything else, and we just shut down because everybody else is shutting down, and the world is watching the church and they see it being fenced in by fear. What witness is that? You know there's lost people watching. Number two, the fear virus is far more devastating than the coronavirus. I remember, I remember going across the big pond, 13 to 15 hour flight, depending on where you're going and connecting over there across the ocean. And I remember you get tired of watching movies on that little dilly thing. And you're cramped up, 6'3 is no good. And I'm sitting there and I saw a documentary that said something to the effect of pharmaceutical giants. And on this story, they happened to catch one of the CEOs or high-ranking officials for one of the pharmaceutical um, corporations. And they asked him. They started asking him a bunch of questions. And then he said this. How do you, how do you introduce a new drug into society? He laughed and said, that's easy. We scare them. This ain't Jason talking. This is what I heard and saw. He laughed and said... We scare them. He said, fear, you don't have to market anymore. They'll come find you. I'm not into conspiracy theorists and all that stuff. I'm not. I'm into very much Bible. Amen. And I know from the very beginning, fear has been attacking mankind. <laughs> Number three, the reason why we stayed open. And I want to commend y'all all for coming. Because by your presence, you show that fear didn't stop you. Amen. Amen. The church is no stranger to fighting something they can't see. Amen. The church is no stranger to fighting something they can't see. The fourth reason we decided to stay open 
was step out on faith and see what God does. There you're not going to see miracles unless you first have a crisis. Amen. So fear, if we're not careful, can fence us in. Y'all turn to a, a book that maybe your eyes hadn't touched in years. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 20. And as you turn there, I'm reminded of a story in Judges chapter 7, Gideon's 300. In Gideon's 300, there's, he started off with 32,000 soldiers, fighting men of war, mighty men, mighty men. It'd be our version of special forces today. Mighty men. And they were about to go up against 120,000 Midianites. And God says, Gideon, you have too many. Reduce your number. you imagine that? God says 32,000 is too many to go fight 120,000. Hey, raise your hand if you ever felt that way. God's asking you to do something. You're like, did you not see what's happening? That's our modern 2020 version of that. And God says, go down and tell everyone who is fearful of dying, go home. 22,000 got up and went home. Now they're left with 10,000. You know what that tells me? Thousands of years ago, fear of dying has always been one of those top things that people have to deal with. That's why we should never make fun of it. Amen. We should figure it out, though. I, I asked, I said, Jesus, teach me how to be brave in the midst of a time where it's so easy to be a coward. You know, when, when, when the Lord finally made me bold is when I repented of being a coward. You know, when you go in that book of Revelation towards the end and it says a list of people who are going to be in the lake of fire, you know who's the first one on the list? The coward. So it's real. It's evident. So we, you can't, this is not a white knuckle moment. This is not bear down moment. You can do that in the buck and shoot. You cannot do that with spiritual matters. You must cling to Jesus. You must ask Jesus to help you. If you don't ask Jesus to help you, you're done. Ask the apostle Peter. Even if all of these people deny you, I will not deny you. I will die and go to prison for you. Within less than 24 hours, he's denied Christ three times, twice to a little girl. And the Bible, the language of the Bible would say he actually cussed her out. And just few hours back breaking bread man he was bumping his chest like he was something special I can tell you right now I do not think I'm something special matter of fact these times God scares me more than anything because he's telling me to say some stuff and I don't want to say it because I don't hear nobody else saying it this is not a chest bumping time this is not a whiteness not a, you don't bear down when it comes to spiritual matters, you hit your knees, you raise your hands, you say, Jesus, I need your help. Amen. That's the only way to survive moments like these. Amen. Only way. Deuteronomy chapter 20, principles governing warfare. You know, the book of Ephesians chapter 6, it says, we do not war against flesh and blood, but we do war against powers principalities, rulers of the darkness, and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenlies. I believe, I believe somewhere in there is the spirit of fear. So how do we, the Bible calls it a spirit. So how do we do this? In, in De Deuteronomy, of all things, we find something very beautiful in the midst of this book on how we should face times of fear. Principles of governing warfare. Biblical principles nobody can get around. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. What is the first instructions of going to war? Don't be afraid. Well, what if we are afraid? Then what? You pray. You pray until you're not afraid. And if it still don't work, guess what? You grab a hold of somebody that you can tell is not afraid, and you say, you pray for me. You know, when we make decisions, we're just human like everybody else, and we go, there's times we're like, man, did we make the right decision? 
And I'm here last night, and there's this person that comes in, four tear crying. He said, I'm terrified, and I know I shouldn't be afraid, but I'm overwhelmed, and I don't know what to do. And I believe the Lord told me to come up here and just have y'all pray for me. There's people that are scared. It's real easy for us to get in the flesh and go, do you believe that? Can you see that? Ba-da-da, all that stuff. Let, let us be the people who are willing to just put our hands on them and start praying for peace on their life. Amen? He said, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord, your, why should we not be afraid? For the Lord your God is with you. Lord Jesus, may it become more and more and more evident of your presence. Amen. Because if we're aware of your presence, then how dare we be afraid? The Lord God is with you, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Listen to this, it gets good. So it shall be when you are on the verge of battle. How I many you know sometimes going to battle is scarier than actually the battle? I remember it used to wear me out right before a fight. I'm like, just hit me. Let's get this going. It'd scare you to death before a fight than the actual fight really did. When you're on the verge of battle, that the priest, everybody say the priest. priest. If you're born again, you're a royal priest to the holy nation. Amen. You're a priest. It shall approach and speak to the people. And he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. So somebody spoke saying, When you see all these things, don't be afraid. Now the priest stood up and said, Don't be afraid. How many times do you think Jesus said, Fear not? Because he's the high priest. Amen? Are y'all still with me? He said, Fear not. Do not let your heart faint, do not be afraid, and do not tremble or be terrified because of them. My Jesus, help us. For the Lord your God is He who goes with you the fight to fight for you against your enemies to save you. After the priest talk, verse 5, now the officers stand up. I love this, there's wisdom in commanders. Then the officer shall speak to the people, saying, What man is there who has built a new house and has not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in battle and another man dedicate it. Also, what man is there who has planted a vineyard and has not eaten of it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man eat of it. And what man is there who is betrothed to a woman and has not married her? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in battle, and another man marry her. Thankful for the word of God. Verse 8, listen to this. We're going to learn something about fear. The officers shall speak further to the people and say, What man is there who is fearful and faint-hearted? That is the fourth time it talks about fear and faint-hearted. Let him go and return to his house. Why? Lest the heart of his brethren faint like his heart. Fear is contagious. When somebody up high makes a certain decision, and they make a certain decision, and then it flows on down, by the time you get to our level, it's not only should we make this decision now, if we feel like we're being led of the Lord, not only do we feel like we're being led of the Lord, now it's going against everything everybody else is doing. Amen? Amen. Sometimes the time to stand the strongest is when everybody else has run off. I'm not, I I pray y'all see my heart. I am so not trying to turn this into a cowboy thing, an alpha male thing. I'm I'm serious. God says this, not Jason, not King's Trail. How many times did they address fear? Four. And if I was the enemy, standing over there trying to come against the church, my first thing would be like this, just go scare them. Amen? Amen. Just go scare them. Have you ever been in a crazy situation and you saw one man or one woman just seem like they're very calm? Did that not bless you? Did that not bless you? I believe our shepherd is a very calm shepherd. How many many of y'all would agree with me that Jesus is not afraid? 
He lives within us. Amen. 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 Fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, long-suffering, joy, and comma, freaking out. (laughs) That's not in there, is it? So then, again, I'm not making fun of nobody. Then what should we pray? Lord, a Apparently, I need to get more filled up with you. Because you said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And here I learned something. How many know that once you get to like four or five kids, you got a herd mentality? If you don't stop stuff certain at a certain time, they'll take over. Right? It says fear is contagious. Right? One reason I love Six Flags because I get to teach my children how to deal with fear. I will never make them ride a ride. Never. But if you get caught talking trash, you're riding it. <laughs> if you go, if you all just all sugared up from funnel cake and cotton candy, and you go, let's go ride the shockwave, I'm like, you're bought and paid for. <laughs> Why do I do that? Because I'm a mean daddy? No. I do that because I don't want to breed cowards. I don't. I want to teach my kids at a young age that there's sometimes absolutely no reason for you to be afraid. And I've even had them. I've even had at one point in time, the clerk, and some of y'all are not going to like me after I say this, but I believe that sometimes a daddy has to stand up and say some very uncomfortable things, and nobody in the room is going to like it, but daddy needs to say it anyway. My boy is kicking and screaming and crying. He's scared. I was like, no, sir. You said you're going to ride it. And I grabbed a hold of him. And I put him down in that seat next to me. And I put on his seatbelt. And the tenant came over and said, you want some help? I said, go away. He's my son. I said, I'll handle it. He goes, yes, sir. <laughs> He's screaming. And we ain't even gone down the hill yet. <laughs> Guess what? how he reacts after we're done? He loves it. He loves it. I pull him off to the side. We get a little Sprite, and I say, sit down. What'd you learn, Jesse? What'd you learn? Fear will stop you from having some great things in your life. Fear will stop you from having some really powerful experiences in your life. I said, you remember that from this day forward because your daddy at 44 still has to overcome fear at times. Amen. And... We just have a global kind of thing going on right now. Amen? Amen. But we learn in verse 8, What man is there who is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house. At least the heart of his brethren faint like his heart. Fear is contagious. So we want to stop it as fast as possible. Amen? Y'all turn to 2 Timothy 1 for me, please. You will see the very first scripture my daughter Maylee memorized. You know, children have nightmares at times. Sometimes it's because you need to turn off the TV and not let them watch that. And sometimes it's demonic. And may God give us wisdom on which is which. Because not everything is a demon. But not everything is just because it's a child. Amen? Amen. All right. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And you might wonder, well, why does he say to do that? Verse 7 explains why. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. I'm so thankful that God the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul to write to young preacher Timothy of Ephesus, saying, look, let me remind you, just because you got your hands laid on you a while back, doesn't mean you're good today. And every once in a while, you need to have hands laid on you to to stir up that gift that is in you. Why? So it can first eliminate fear. It's not coincidence that it names it first. And then now, not only do you eliminate fear, but now it gives you the power to overcome. How many know the Bible says Christians are overcomers? Not succumbers, overcomers. Then he gives you the power to overcome, and then he gives you love That's the most powerful thing there. 
and a sound mind. I believe now more than ever in this time, we need to be looking at the situation with the correct biblical eternal mind. Sound mind. That means a right way of thinking, a right way of viewing something. I can see y'all. Everybody look up here. I can see y'all. Y'all can see me. But there's something not right. Right? That's what fear does. That's what addiction does. That's what a, we all have our own versions of this, right? How many of you know that Jesus annihilates fences? Amen. He'll annihilate. Y'all ain't going to see this up here next week. Amen? Amen? It's going to be taken down. Jesus takes down these fences. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So that, those two verses right there, I don't want people to be afraid of the altar. <laughs> we will not bathe you in it unless the Lord tells us to. But we do. I, Molly, my bride, is right there. Did we or did we not? Three or four days ago, line our children up in our living room. They got on their knees, and mom and daddy prayed over and anointed every one of them. Amen. And I can tell you, every mom and dad in here knows your child. Yeah. Knows it. I mean, it used to freak me out. I can walk in the living room, and my dad go, you all right? I'm like, he ain't said that six times in the living room. And the time that I'm jacked up, he goes, you all right? <laughs> I was like, how does he do that? A parent knows their child. And I can tell you, without being preachy, without getting loud, I can tell you with full assurance they were different children when they got up off their knees. Amen. Who are we to God? His children. Amen. And there's times that we need to have people lay hands on us, pray over and anoint us, ask the Holy Spirit to take full control, and you will get up, not maybe, not probably, but you will get up differently, full of power. This is not hype talk. This isn't churchy stuff. This is a crazy man that has been fully convinced this works. If he is the great physician, he has given us a prescription for fear. And this is one way to do it, one way to overcome it. So we're going to open up the altar towards the end. I got one more verse towards the end. And if you want to be prayed over and anointed, come on. We're going to do that. Amen? We want to be available. Turn to Matthew chapter 8. My last set of scriptures. Jesus, help us. Help us, help us, help us. We magnify your name. Glory, hallelujah. Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Jesus cleanses a leper. You know how leprosy is spread? The same way a coronavirus is spread. Amen. Does your Bible, my Bible says it, I want to make sure, does your Bible say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes. So Jesus is still in the healing business. Amen. And if you don't say amen to that, then you need to come tell me how my thyroid's been healed for eight years amen. after a doctor said it can't be healed. Amen. Three blood tests, it's been healed. How, how, how's that possible? Because the Word of God is true. Amen. Amen. Okay, Matthew chapter 8. Jesus cleanses a leper. When he had come down from a mountain, great multitudes followed him. Hmm. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him. Everybody say, worshipped him. I think it's wise counsel for us to be obedient to the word that before we request things from Jesus, we should probably worship him first. Amen. He worshipped him first. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched. Everybody say touched. touched. Let's just be real. Somebody comes up to you and says, I have the virus. We're going to find out real quick. How, and I believe in the days to come, we're about to find out real quick what we actually do believe. It's being exposed. What we truly believe. There is one time, the Holy Spirit is a beautiful teacher. There's one time, I, I don't remember if it was a dream or a vision. I don't remember which one. A dream is when you see something and you're asleep, and a vision is when you're wide awake and you see something. But I had the Bible, and I opened it up, 
and it was all full. All scripture, normal Bible. I shut the Bible, open back up the Bible, and there are scriptures here and there. And I was like, what is this? And the Lord said, those are the verses you've actually read yourself. And I shut the Bible, open it up again, and it was even fewer. And I was like, what is this? The Lord said, that's the verses you actually believe. If you opened up your Bible right now and the Holy Spirit and all His miracle power just revealed to you the verses you actually believe and stand on, how full or empty would your Bible be? Amen? This is not a rebuke. This is just a thought-provoking, stirring question. The teacher would always ask questions that would cause us to look at ourselves, evaluate ourselves on a deeper level, and go, am I in this or not? Ch Test yourself. Don't you know yourself? Why? Why am I testing myself? To see if I am actually in the faith or not. Amen? Amen. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing to be cleansed. I wonder how many people would load up on a van or a bus and say, hey, we're not going to South Texas because of a hurricane. We're not going to Oklahoma because of a tornado. We're going to such and such because it's infested with the coronavirus. Yeah. I'm asking myself these same questions, guys. How dare I stand up here and be a hypocrite and not at first evaluate myself? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I'm never preaching at you. I'm excited to tell you what's going on. That's basically what a preacher does. Amen? Amen? And Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony. If you believe God's word, say amen. amen. Okay. I'm going to read a scripture. Banyan come. Wanted some extra time to pray for the heaven altar time. Um, and if you don't feel like coming to the altar, then I would encourage you to pray for other churches, other shepherds, other leaders, elders, uh, community leaders, superintendents, teachers, governor, Texas governor. Um, I've been paying attention to what he, obviously it's at a state of emergency, right? But he has not first uh, distributed the directives yet. There may be come some directives that, uh, that we need to follow. And, and the elders and I are going to stay in unity on our constant decision as we go. And I heard some cities, you can't have a crowd over 500. If that was us, we just broke that, right? But at the same time, we want to be wise. Because Romans chapter 13 says, obey the laws of the land. But there's a time, a little short period in the book of Acts, where the apostle Peter and John says, well, whether it is for us to obey you or not, that is between you and God. But for us, we must testify of what we know and what we see. Translation, if they said that to us, then guess what? We're going to have to figure something out. Maybe have clickers at the door. And as soon as we get over that, we're going to have some burn barrel time out in the parking lot. We're going to have a separate crowd. If it gets too crowded there, we're going to go to the arena. If it gets too crowded there, we just got 50 acres given to us, and we're going to find some burn barrels over there. But in Jesus' name, I, I believe in Jesus' name, it is possible that we not stop having church. And y'all, if y'all don't know me, hear this very clear. I could care less what money goes in those whiskey barrels. I care about who is getting close to Jesus, who is actually Christians, who is actually lost and desire to be saved and want to know about this gospel of Jesus Christ. I get really excited when I pray over people because then I know they're about to go, whoa, something just happened. I'm like, yeah, that's my king. You want to see some more? And it's not me. It's not this church. It's him. And then people get excited because Jesus is real. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read this verse. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Psalm 91. Yes. Pastors, y'all can come. Elders, please come. You can come with your brides, please. Um, let me read it. You know what? May we stand... As we read God's word, Psalm 91, I read out of the New King James Version, and I'm reading all 16 verses. 
safety of abiding in the presence of God. Just stand. Please don't get ready to leave yet so we can hear God's word. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Lord, help us trust you more. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Hello, welcome to 2020. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Everybody say long life. life. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalm number 91 verses 1 through 16. Father... We worship you. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you touch every heart in here. Lord, I pray that you start with the one that is most angry or upset. There's nothing that can stop your penetration power. Jesus teaches us how to be wise in these times, but also how to be very bold. Lord, you are both, and we ask to be both, just like our daddy, just like our king. Father, I pray you anoint every man and woman at this altar right now, willing to put themselves up here and pray for people. Make them very wise, give them words of knowledge, words of wisdom, gifts of miracles, gifts of healing, gifts of faith. Lord, if your book says it, Lord, we want it. Jesus, anoint this band. Increase your presence in this place and on this land. Jesus, I ask. You said make your request be made known to man. I ask, Lord, as the under-shepherd of this church, make this a Holy Ghost quarantine. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless y'all. Hello everybody again, Uh, you just finished listening to the sermon today, and uh, I have another scripture, imagine that, Uh, lots of God's word being poured into you today or tonight or however or what time um, this message is reaching you, but in Mark chapter 4, verse 15, it talks about the parable of the sower and the seed, God's seed is God's word, and listen to this real quick, it says, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in your hearts. So since God's word has been sown in your heart during that message, it is our prayer that God solidifies that seed and protects it and watches over it and may it be watered. And just as God's word says, may he give the increase. And I pray he gives the increase of salvation in your life. And I need you to hear this real quick. I need you to pause what you're doing. I need you to listen. And I pray these words sink deep down into your soul. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you do do believe that to be true, 
And I pray that you, that you say this prayer. And you know what? You don't want to say it if you don't mean it. But, don't, but if you do believe it and you do mean it, then you need to confess it. You know, when, gospel, when the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached, it fills up your heart. And uh, you desire to be saved. So you just say a simple prayer like this. You say, Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive me of all my sins. And I ask that you come into my life and be the boss of my life. Today I confess you as Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Be Lord of my life. And if you did that, your salvation is um, totally and completely secured. And I would encourage you to go tell somebody that you got saved today or tonight or whenever you heard this message. And I pray we see you again back at the sermon section. I pray you come and visit us in person if, uh, um, if you're around this local area. But either way, may God bless you and we love you all in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.